latest lockdown special of True Blue. Today we have got a special guest, Andrew Gillum, who works in the media department at Sunday City. Welcome, Andrew. Thank you, Evan. Yeah, how are you? How are things? Good. <laughs> I'm excited to speak to Andrew as he not only works for my favourite team, but he also went to my school, my Sedan, which is very encouraging. encouraging for someone wanting to into support media like me. Can you tell us what is your role at the Swans? Yeah, so Evan, so I'm um, Swansea City's website content editor. So my job is to write and um, sub anything football related that goes on Swansea's website. So when you see our match reports after games, uh, interviews with players and managers, uh, I either have written that or I, I'll try to check through it to make sure it reads okay and hopefully we haven't made too many mistakes. I've been enjoying preparing, reporting for our club's YouTube programme and would love to work on football media when I'm older. How old were you when you wanted to get into the media and did you anything like this? I, I've, I've seen some of the stuff you guys do on YouTube. It's really, really good. I've seen you do the Cospar Challenge and you've interviewed a couple of the coaches. So that's really good. I think that's great to see. I think before I went to Mysa there, when I already knew I wanted to work in sports media from a really young age. Um, I think my primary school teachers got fed up of me because like, they'd set homework as to something you'd done over the weekend and I would write about watching a football game. So I always knew it was what I wanted to do. Do you wish you played for the best team in our area, Ustrad? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm an Abercrave boy, Evan, so I probably I probably shouldn't say that uh, I'd want to play for a stud, otherwise my parents might not let me back in their house. But um, I, when I look at the, you know, the youth section that you and a lot of people your age play in and the girls set up as well, I think that's fantastic. I, w I would have loved to have had the standard of coaching, which I think you guys now get. And you know to see that wide range of teams you've got, you know I think you know I think it's I, I think it's really exciting for for us to get nice to have such a big junior section, you know, producing so many young players and getting kids to enjoy football because that's what we all that's what we all do. You know, I'm no, I'm no different to you, Evan. I love football. How did you start working with the Swans, and what other jobs did you do before? Okay, Evan. Yeah, this might be a long answer, okay, because I've had quite a few jobs. But I, um, I started working for the Swans in December of 2018. Um, they needed someone to come and um, work on their website, and I was interviewed for it, and I, and I got the job. And I really, really enjoy what I do. My first job in journalism, I was um, the editor of Swans University's newspaper and magazine for for a year. Uh, but I was desperate to, to work in sport, and I got a job then with the Press Association, which they're the biggest news agency in the UK. And I worked in their sports department, uh, I think it was for seven years in total. Started off on, uh, I don't know, your parents might be able to tell you more about this, but I used to work on their teletext desk um, before working on their main sports operation. And I, and I used to do extra work where I would go to games and report on them because that's what I wanted to do and I wanted to show that I was you know, I was willing to make the effort. And then they give me the chance to be their Welsh football reporter. So from 2011, when the Swans were promoted to the Premier League, I moved back down to South Wales and I covered the Swans and I covered the Wales football team for them. And I was lucky enough to do a lot of other stuff as well. I covered Formula One races in the UK and abroad. Um, 
I covered rugby, boxing, cricket. I left there to go to a company called Westgate in Cardiff, which is a smaller agency. I would write articles for the Sunday Times or the Daily Mirror. I covered Wales' rugby tour of South Africa in 2014, which was fantastic. And the best thing I did in my career was I got a report on Wales at the Euros in France four years ago. So, in fact, four years ago today, I was on the ferry over to France to go and cover that. And that was, that was just that was amazing. That, that was, I, I've, I've got a scrapbook of everything I, I wrote during that time. I've kept it and I'll probably keep it for the rest of my life and bore my daughter and any grandkids I have <laughs> about it. Um, and then I switched from there. I switched from there to being the Evening Post and Wales Online, Swansea writer. And then obviously now on to work with uh, on to work with the Swans. So I know that's a long answer. <laughs> I've heard the media gets lots of nice food before the games. What's the best stadium you have been to, and who has the best food and drink? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question, Evan. Because believe me, a lot of people that work in the media they like their free food. It's really, it's really important to them. I can tell you, I can tell you that from experience. Um, my favourite stadium I visited reporting was when the Swans were in the Europa League uh, in the 2013-14 season. They drew Napoli. So, again, this shows how old I am, Evan. But I loved Diego Maradona as a kid. Loved, he was my favourite player. One of the first jerseys I ever had was an Argentina number 10 Maradona jersey. And he used to play for Napoli way back when I was young. And he played for them in that stadium. And it was amazing to be there. And there's still, there's still graffiti on the stands. You know, obviously Maradona is God. And there's still posters of him. So I loved, I loved that just because it took me somewhere that as a kid I'd always wanted to go. Uh, in terms of food, Chelsea was always very good. Very good. We used to get... Um, Oh, I mean, well, it was more than a three-course meal. There was so much food there. Um, so you, you tended to go for seconds at Chelsea. And, uh, and Arsenal was very good as well in the Premier League, I must say. Do the Swans players enjoy doing the media stuff? I think, I think some of them do and some of them don't, Evan, just because it's like anything, isn't it? People are more comfortable doing some things than others. So there's some of them that are they're quite happy to stand in front of a camera or in front of a microphone and it's no problem for them. And for others, they can feel a little bit self-conscious or nervous and so they don't enjoy it as much. So um, the group, uh, the, the squad they've got there at the moment, the majority of them are really, really good. Um, Joe Roden's very good. Connor Roberts is very good. Um, Wayne Routledge doesn't do a lot, but when Wayne, when you speak to Wayne, he's very, very intelligent. You know, he, he knows so much about football from across his career. So he's always really interesting to talk to, just because he's he's almost done everything there is to do. You know, so on on the whole, they're a pretty good group. But I think a lot of them, they're, they're pretty confident doing the media stuff. Who is the best Swans player doing media stuff? With. I I personally think that as I just said now Wayne Routledge is is really interesting because I just think he's got so much experience and knowledge. I always enjoy listening to him speak about football. You know, and I think a lot of the players think very highly of him in how you know how much he knows of the game. So he's really good. But there's some there's some really good characters in that squad as well. There's guys who are very you know quite funny and enjoy a laugh. You know, obviously we had. Ollie McBurney, who you know, he loved, loved having a laugh and having a joke on camera. Um, Joe Roden, as I said, is very good. And you know, Jan Dander's a nice, you know, really nice guy as well, and he speaks well. There's, there's quite a few. You know, there's quite a few of them who I think are pretty good. But I'd probably say the best, just because of how much knowledge he's got. I would, I'd probably say Wayne, Wayne Routledge. I met Wayne Routledge, and he gave me a trophy. Oh well, see, top man. That just goes to show, Evan, doesn't it? He must, he must be good. He must yeah. be good all round, yeah. eh? <laughs> Who is the most famous player you interviewed? 
probably the most famous footballer I've interviewed would be Gareth Bale um, from when I covered Wales. So, you know, he he's a, he is a superstar, isn't he? He is, you know, to my he's he's the best he's the best player Wales have had in my lifetime. There's, you know, he is just incredible, isn't he? I'm sure he must be one of your favourite players mm-hmm. as well, Evan. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. And he's, um, you know, quite. He's although he's a superstar, he's he's a very down to earth guy. He's a great representative for Wales, isn't he? You know, I think we're all we're all proud to be Welsh, and we're all proud to see someone who is Welsh making his mark in the world like he is. I'd love to be the next Chris Kamara. Um, you met Tommy. <laughs> yeah, I've I have met him. I, I wouldn't say that I know him, Evan, but I've I've met him um, a few times when he's come to uh, Swansea games. So he's a really, as you can imagine, he's a really friendly, really funny guy. And um, although <coughs> although I know a lot of people, you know, post videos of him if he makes the odd mistake sometimes when he's on air. He does his research, you know. He does his homework, and he's uh, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. I'm glad. I'm glad you like him. I think he's great. Unbelievable, Jeff. Unbelievable, Jeff. <laughs> what advice would you give to someone wanted to work in football media? I think the best advice would be to try and get as much work experience and experience as you can. So, like Evan, you've got a really good start because you're already doing stuff on camera and on YouTube with um, the true blue stuff that you do. So that's really, really good because I didn't have anything like that when I was when I was your age. And you know, just just look out for opportunities. You have, you know, you have, excuse me, you have the Evening Post. You know, not too far away from you there. There's other regional newspapers. There's, you know, we do work experience at Swansea City. That's always good to go and go in somewhere for a week or two and just have a look and sort of understand how people put things together either on broadcast or newspapers <coughs> or a website you know you know in Swansea's case um, and that, that's the main thing like if, if you get the chance to experience it you'll have a better idea of what it's like and how much you'll enjoy it or whether you'll enjoy it or not and then try it yourself there's no there's no substitute for doing it yourself because that's that's how you learn. And don't and don't be afraid of making mistakes because everyone does. You went to the same school as me. What what was my like then? Who was your favourite teacher? Oh, that's a difficult question. Um, so my scenario would have been very different when I went because I think that a lot of the, some of the buildings from when I was there have been knocked down. I mean, I always enjoyed history. That was one of my favourite, one of my favourite subjects. So there was a, I don't know if he's still there, but there was a guy called Ward Jones who taught history when I was there. And he was great. Yeah, I thought he was a really good teacher. Um, and, and there was a Mrs. Lord who taught history as well and uh, they were good teachers Peter Dawson who taught English was always good fun um you know very very passionate about his subject so I always I always liked I always liked teachers who were you know they really cared about what they were teaching you when they were they were passionate about it how will your job change after lockdown we've had to we've had to change how we interview players because obviously we can't go up the training ground and just speak to them. So we interview them as as you're interviewing me now. We we interview them over Zoom, uh, and we've had to use a lot of archive material because we can't interview players about games that aren't happening. So we've had to do a lot of things about uh, players' favourite games, the best players they've played with or against. Um, we've done some retro features. We did a load about um, the Swans last season at the Vetch because it was 15 years ago. So we've had to do a lot of Stuff that looks backwards rather than looking forwards. What, what is it have been the Swans news lineup before anyone? When when players sign, you know, obviously it's you know it's quite good fun when they come to be have their photo taken and their interview and you know or maybe only a handful of people know and you'd be one of them. That's quite nice and you know as you say team lineups, you know we get them. 
you know, about an hour before they're made public. So, we, you know, we can do pieces for the website about it and our social media team can get all their graphics ready. So, yeah, it is, um, yeah, that is quite a cool part of the, of the job. It's, it's nice to be in the know. Although the only problem is, Evan, you're not allowed to tell anyone. You've got to keep it a secret. So only you can know and you've got to, you've got to keep it to yourself. As you get a little bit older and you want to look at doing work experience like we were talking about now, just let Dan know. Get in, t- you get in touch with me and I can give you some people that you can get hold of. And you might be able to go and work for a week in their office or maybe in my office. Does that sound good? Yeah, wow. Thank you. Yeah, just keep us in mind, right? I think we do work experience from age 15 onwards, I think. So, you know, when you get, obviously, a few years away, but if you get a bit older and you want to come and do it, you let me know. And I, I, if it's not coming to Swansea City, I, you know, I know a few people who might be able to help you, okay? And um, I'll tell you what we'll do as well, Evan. Where, I don't know when this will be, but whenever crowds are allowed back into stadiums to watch games, right? I'll see if I can get... Um, Get a ticket for you and mum or you and dad to come down and watch a, watch a Swans game, right? We'll try and sort something out. Okay, Matt? Does that sound good? Thank you. No worries. Hey, who's, who's your favourite Swans player out of interest? Connor. Connor gave me a video. Did he? Yeah. What was it, what was it about? Keeping your spirits up on, when you're down and stuff. Yeah. Thank you, Andrew, for talking. Taking the time to speak. To us today. It's been really interesting to speak to someone in the media and definitely inspiring. Take take care of yourself, right? Stay safe. Bye. Good man.